We are the One Story Podcast. We believe in the power of a story. Everyone has a story, and that story is meaningful. Your story can make a difference. Your story can inspire others. Your story is important. At the same time, ultimately, everyone's story is a part of one story, the Big God story. It's not what you say. You're not who you said you were. This is the One Story Podcast. How are you doing? My name is Drew and I'm with my friend Isaac. Hey, buddy. And this is my radio voice. It's late. It's Friday. <laughs> Got nothing for We're, you. <laughs> so sorry. See if you'd chime in. <laughs> We're a little burnt out. We just recorded three episodes, but you know what? We're still feeling good. We're happy to be doing this. Absolutely. We're very happy and blessed that you're listening to this. Absolutely. We're, uh, this is episode... 49 which is crazy almost finishing the year out and we just want to also i can't believe it's already been a year i know that is insane remind you that this friday december 14th now thinking about it this time last year we were were like talking about this we were like drew you were saying well we'll start sometime in march (laughs) (laughs) we gotta do it now we gotta do it now (laughs) no but it's all i mean yeah we'll we'll talk about it on the live show as we recap the year yes so you're invited come out december 14th to southland's chino church is where it's being held next week well if this is coming out on the 10th so i'm saying this friday oh this friday yeah the 14th this friday (laughs) at seven o'clock um give the address yeah uh, I'm sorry, I got excited there. <laughs> 5559 Chino. Uh, I'm sorry, 5559 Park, Park Place, Place, Chino, California, 91710. And it's going to be, be there or be square. We're going to record our show, and uh, that that show will actually drop at the end of the year, but it's just going to be a time to celebrate. I just got the real podcast. nervous. <laughs> It's, it's coming quick. We're, we're blowing it. <laughs> I'm not even prepared. And um, just hopefully it goes like your Cuban trip. We'll be good. Well, that didn't go that well. I know. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, the trip was great. Anyways, um, yeah, come out. You're all invited. Uh, RSVP if you can. By this point, you know, just come. And we're going to be celebrating the podcast, celebrating the year, and all of our past guests, and just time to hang out and fellowship with each other. Today's episode is with Daniel Viveros and uh, another another awesome story and we hope you enjoy it. Uh, don't forget to reach out to us, to us on social media, um, our one story podcast. G- <laughs> Here we go. Sure. We, yeah, can, we got We got Mel just stops working. Instagram, <laughs> sure. Instagram and Facebook, <laughs> one story podcast. And you can email us at one story podcast at gmail.com. We want to ask that you'd continue to uh, rate and review this. Uh, reviews are really important on iTunes to help for visibility. So we would appreciate it if you could. You can do all that. Just uh, all I really care is if you follow me on Instagram at Isaac Dollar Okay. <laughs> he said it. So uh, without further ado, here's the episode with Daniel. Yeah. Let that whistle. You're ready to rock. You're about to talk your brain off right now. You ner- okay. you nervous at all? No, nah, not really. All right, good. Are you? Are you Some, sometimes. That's a, that's a first. Yeah. It's the okay. last time it's I okay told, if you are. <laughs> we've had people so nervous they won't even show up. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty crazy. You know what I was thinking? I was thinking of uh, uh, dang, we played football with him. Oh, stout. <laughs> and he was like, I can't do it, guys. <laughs> I was laughing about that today. Make sure that doesn't get in there. Yeah. So the uh, don't worry, he doesn't listen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the connection here is uh Mr. Minor reached out to us and he gave Minor us your, your number a little bit ago and so yeah. we reached out to you Daniel and um you answered back and you said that you were interested in coming on here and sharing your story so we thank you for showing up, yeah, making no the problem. long haul from, where were you driving from? Uh, San Bernardino. San Bernardino, yeah. so it's no joke. No. What was it, That's an hour sick. and a half or longer? An hour and 30. Dang. 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 Logistics. <laughs> You're in the wrong trade, brother. <laughs> <laughs> no, I got to do that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah so uh, what's uh, what's your story, man? What's the what's the beginning and where are you going to take us? Um, well, uh, I could go as far as back. I was born in, uh, in Glendora. Glendora. In Glendora, California. Um, and from there, we just, we moved a lot, man. We moved a lot around. 
uh, me, my mom, a single mom, and uh, uh, my brother and sister, um, brother and sister, the oldest, and um, I'm the youngest in the family. You're the youngest? Yeah. And just, you know, we moved around a lot, and um, um, some of the places that we went were, um, like, I I remember, like, you know, um, like Pomona. I remember, like, back in the day, because Pomona changed, though. Mm-hmm. And a lot of different cities uh, that we moved it uh, to, they they changed. and uh, Like the way they are now? Yeah, the way they are now. You got a whole bunch of different buildings and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And uh, so, and How was it back then? Back then, it was, like, I remember, like, the, like in Pomona at the, uh, San Bernardino and, um, and Gary, like, there was this uh, Chinese fish market, and hmm. you could smell the fish. Wow. And we lived behind it in my grandma's <laughs> house. And I just remember that place. And But now it's like a, a Mexican meat or Mexican place, you know. Uh, and, uh, wow. So uh, growing up there, that's kind of like where I learned um, or where I came to realize, like, my I don't have a father. Like, mm-hmm. you know, where is he at? You know, How old were you at the time? Probably, um, I want to say around five. Oh, okay. So just because you really noticed like, yeah. other kids with their dads? Yeah, well, like, it's it's crazy because across the street from uh, my grandma's house, because um, my grandpa would always be like, oh, not to, because I have a, a aunt that's um, a little bit younger than me. And uh, my grandpa would always say, oh, don't hang out with her. You know, don't play with the girls. You know, go outside and play with the boys. And uh, so I would, my, the, my neighbor across the street, uh, a little boy, and uh, I used to play with them. And we would be playing, like, catch and stuff like that. And then I would never forget it, man. Like, his dad would come home, right? And uh, when his dad would come home in a tie and, like, business guy, and mm-hmm. uh, he'll come home and he'd get out the car, and the, the boy would be, like, so excited to see his dad. And his mm-hmm. dad would just run to it. Uh, run to the boy and he'll be like dad i missed you man it's like he was gone for a long time yeah and then uh um he'll be like all right daniel i'll see you later and then that was done with you guys that was done with me and with dad yeah exactly and then i would be like man how come and then i'll go into my house uh, and i don't see that at all Mm -hmm. and it kind of like i reflected on that and i would like get angry you know and um but um during that time it's like uh there's a lot of stuff that was going on within there did you ask about your mom about where yeah, your dad was or there was all kinds of different stories mm-hmm. you know and um and but none of it like i really 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 wasn't really trying to like um like dwell on it like oh f- forget him he doesn't want me then uh it's all right you know mm-hmm. so um uh, we just kept it as that and um but i those are like the the best times man because it's like you know, you go out and play uh, street football, and uh, there was and, no worries. Yeah, no you're worries. You're just hanging out. Come out, come, come home when the street lights come on, mm-hmm. and <laughs> and um, uh, my sister and she would, you know, have friends down the street, and it was a really good, good time. And the family used to come together at Thanksgiving and holidays and stuff like mm-hmm. that. And um, but you know, there was a lot of things that was going on within that household that I didn't know of because I'm just a young, young. kid, you mm-hmm. know. Mm-hmm. And um, so just growing up in that environment and um, my uh, my father figures are, were um, like my uncles and, um, you know, and I would you see. Said your grandpa. Yeah, and my, and my grandpa. But my grandpa was really, he wasn't really involved in, in like that, you know, um, he more of my um my my uncle he would like sit down and be like hey um teach me you know certain things like um like riding a bike or something like that he never really like taught me how to ride a bike but yeah, yeah. um but just had a part in like almost like raising you a little yeah bit, yeah you know so, yeah. yeah he was there and he had an influence and um and i would look up to him and stuff like that and um but you know we started moving around a lot and um i remember predominantly uh, i grew up in um, um in rancho and Cucamonga, mm-hmm. and uh, during that time we we stayed like on the uh, I want to say on the west side of uh, uh, Sam, uh, of uh, Rancho, right over there by closer to Upland, mm-hmm. and um, like closer to uh, um, like uh, Ontario, uh, like like, like uh, old Ontario, town, old, yeah, the old town Ontario, yeah, yeah, yeah like like okay. uh, more towards um, Vineyard. Yeah. So um, we grew up at this house, and um, a lot of stuff happened over there. There used to be parties. There used to be all kinds of different things, and um, um, who was having the parties? Uh, family. Oh, okay. A lot of family coming over and um, so just alcohol there. Yeah, and then, alcohol. Yeah. You know, fights, and um, mm. I would see my uncles fight, mm-hmm. and um, so we we're just. Uh, I was just exposed to this. You know, how old and, uh, are your uncles? 
Were they well, like old, like older? Yeah. Because you yeah. said your aunt was younger than you. Yeah, my so, my, <laughs> my I'm not sure aunt, if they were like a couple well, of years older than you or something. Well, I have um um. um let me see how many, how many aunts do I have? <laughs> <laughs> but they got a big family. But at, that, yeah. but at that time, they were they were older, and you know, people were there partying. Yeah, is basically what. Okay. Yeah, basically it was like that, and uh, um, I only had uh, I only have one uncle, but like you know, the married in uncles, right? And so from the aunts, mm-hmm. yeah, from the aunts. And so <clears throat> gotcha. Um, so they would they would be around, and um, so there was a lot of drinking, and it just there was a lot of laughter. There was a lot of um, then there would be fights and stuff like that, and stuff that I didn't really you know recognize until um, later on in life. You know, what I mean, I'll be like, man, I remember that. You know, they it was they, appealing to you. Yeah. So, um, but I remember one time my mom had uh, she had a boyfriend, and um, he would be around there, and um, and he would come around a lot, and. Um, you know, and his influences, it was, um, it wasn't really good. You know what I mean? And um, there would be a lot of strife, a lot of uh, conflicts with them, and um, and I, I was witness to it. You know what I mean? And uh, and uh, I used to be scared sometimes. You know what I mean? But um, I remember um, my brother would always be there and stuff like that. And um, but I didn't really um, drink alcohol or do drugs at that time. You know what I mean? But other things were going on with inside of me that I didn't realize, you know, like, uh, you know, like being afraid of certain things and, um, uh, you know, like, um, like my neighbors and, um, um, just being afraid of, of whatever that's out there, you know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And we're just moving around because my mom was working two jobs. So it was hard for her to, you know, she was just trying to provide. Yeah, exactly, Mm -hmm. man. It was, it was hard for her to like really like raise us. And no, but at yeah. the same time as um, being a mom and yeah, absolutely. doing all that stuff, she's just so. trying to put a roof of overhead, food on the table. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Man. So were you were you like left to yourself a lot, you and your siblings? Well, I mean, to to a certain extent, but not really like um, alone. Right. Yeah. But I remember there there were times when it was just me, my brother, and my sister, and um, and uh, my brother would do like br- older brother things, like you know. Pick like, on you a little yeah, bit. Yeah, pick on me <laughs> and, uh, you know, tie me up. You and didn't have anyone to, to run <laughs> to. I thought that was pretty cool at that time, you know what I <laughs> mean? How much older is he than you? Uh, and he's about a few years older than me. Okay. Probably, um, he's not 40, so I'm 33, so he's he's a few years older than me. Okay. And, um, but, you know, um, he he was like um, more the father figure than mm-hmm. anything else, you know, and uh, anybody else. But uh, I remember we, we lived in Fontana, and before the uh, speedway was there and uh, at that house that's when um um i had cousins that would come over and we well, they would hang out and um and you know um during that time man it was pretty cool because like again you know the family was still hanging out and um and coming together and and, and you know doing family functions and stuff like that so um we had that there you know what i mean but like like i said before is like my mom was was gone a lot of times and when she was gone then um we would have uh different babysitters or like my grandma or aunts or mm-hmm. um for me i would have um, a lot of, i had a lot of different babysitters that my mom's my mom's friends that would watch me and um some of them were really cool man like they really treated me really good man and um, mm. i i learned from them uh, um and i seen the father figures f- for their fathers you know the the kids you know the uh, my babysitter's kids and i would see their fathers how how they eat dinner at the table and and they would pray and mm-hmm. stuff like that so i was exposed to that you know but in middle school um i i think i was like about the age 10 and um during that time, that's when a lot of things started to happen in the family. A lot of sa- family separation for whatever reason, you know, maybe grudges or whatever the case may be. But um, um, there was family separation. So there's no longer that um, that family environment where um, everybody's like, getting together. Exactly. You know, yeah. and so I, I stopped seeing that, you know, and um, and I remember my mom, um, um, she would take me to church. And at this time, we were going to uh, Calvary Chapel uh, Rancho. Was this new? Or did you had you guys been going to church in the past? No, we never went to the church. I, well, I don't remember going to a church in the past. Mm-hmm. How did you guys end up over there? Well, do you know mm-hmm. how she got introduced to it? Well, she, I think, um, from from what she told me, it's that she she got saved at, a, um, you know, a West Covina, well, Raul Reese, uh-huh. when he was out there. And then... Um, 
so then um she came you know and then we just started going mm -hmm. you know and she started inviting me and my my grandma would go and then um so i started being involved and and being in the plays mm -hmm. and doing the trunk of treats and um i remember we passed the gym and I, I would see him a lot of the times and um it was really good man and i you know t hearing about jesus and um you know, and just, you know, Sunday school, and, and it was really cool, man, and um, I don't remember that much of it, but I remember it was really... It was a safe place, yeah, it, it sounds was a safe, like. Yeah, it was a it really like safe you were place. saying you were kind of fearing the home, whatever was going on in the neighborhood, going yeah. on at whatever chaos was going on at home, mm -hmm. you're going to church, and then it's everybody's happy, and, you know, you get to play with people your your age and, mm -hmm. and you're doing all this stuff singing and doing crafts yeah. and stuff like that it was yeah. safe and you were happy yeah i mean like the kids were totally different you know what i mean from the, kids the neighborhood the yeah, yeah the neighborhood kids you know what i mean and um because the neighborhood kids were real you know what rough. Mean? Like, yeah. like straight rough up kids <laughs> and um um so you know but it started to happen when the change started to happen when um like when we're at church and then um we would have um a certain um you know, way about going about things and like, you know, the way we talk and the way we act, our behavior was one way at church. But mm -hmm. then when we go home, there's parties, there's drinking. There's this was your mom that was <clears throat> participating in, yeah. in like the partying too? Yeah. And okay. so like the fa the whole family, like the whole family dynamic was. Oh, because you said a lot of people, a lot of people from family were going to church. Yeah. And well, my, my grandma, my mom, that those are the ones I could remember. Okay. And I don't think my, I, I can't remember if my brother or my sister really went. I think my sister did, but I can't remember if my brother went. Okay. But um, I remember just seeing that change, you know what I mean? And um, so, you know, when I seen that change and then uh, I don't, I didn't really like it, you know? Mm -hmm. So I started to um, um, really uh, desire to just stay home, you know what I mean? And um, my grandma would take me in, uh, to church and my mom would stay back. And um, But during this point in time, uh, um, I started to, uh, I, by this time, um, probably the age of 10 i already tried um you know cigarettes i already tried uh some alcohol a little taste of it i already tried marijuana hmm. and, and was um, this just from what was going on in your house within your family yeah. or was this from neighborhood kids no nah, from family okay so uh you know family would come around and i wouldn't and uh i remember uh, <laughs> my brother and his friends you know they uh, we, we would hit the bong you know and uh, i hit the bong one time and i was just my mom was so mad you know, so, so mad. And, uh, wait, was this, so that was out like forever? Like, no, it wasn't like, oh, hide it or do it behind the house or no one's seeing. It was just out, just yeah. out in front of everybody. Yeah. Dang. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the, the time that I did it would, we hit that, um, that, that bong, but it was, um, at a friend's house with my brother's friend's house. And I was just going to go there to go swimming. But when my mom came to pick me up, then, um, then, uh, she was mad, but, I think she she was like uh, she told me well if you're gonna do it do that just do it at the house so I know where you're at mm. so that I think that logic was like you know so I know you're, you're safe, safe you know what I mean and uh, but not really understanding that you're gonna create a monster and uh, you know and it's I mean, gonna I think there's a lot of layers to that but yeah, yeah. so you know um, but when that happened it, it was kind of like you know she still didn't like it at all you know and um, but when the parties are still happening, you know, things are still coming up. And, uh, um, I remember, uh, uh, me and my, my buddy, we decided to, uh, you know, save up some change. And, um, we, we got a, uh, probably like about five, 10 bucks. And we asked this, this homeless guy in the back of the liquor store to, to get us some, some forties. Mm -hmm. So he ended up getting us some forties and we bought him one and we went, we went back to the house and we went and because, like I said before, my mom was always, you know, at work. So my brother and my sister would be there. And um, so we went in the back of the house. And when we went back there, uh, we, we, we had a challenge, you know, like, see who can drink it faster. Right. So when that went in, when uh, it was a, uh, it was uh, old English. I remember it, like, you know, and <laughs> it was just like, when that went in, man. That's only what I was about yeah. to say. Three forties for, for 10 bucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was, it was, you know, um, but when, we, when, when that alcohol, like, went inside me, like, it just, like, I escaped from all reality, like, of all that um, 
because at that time I was I, I got picked on in elementary you know I got um, bullied uh, mm. uh, in in the neighborhood and and my brother was always there to protect me and, and like oh, who did it you know and he would go beat him up and but you know that still affected me but when that alcohol went inside of me man it just like like all uh, that all went the, away yeah all that went away and that mm. was like I felt you know it gave me courage it gave me um you know i could speak i could talk you know i'm not shy no more and um uh, i'm i'm a different person it covered up all that that fear and hurt or yeah. whatever pain it was it was covered up by yeah. what the alcohol was doing What's yeah that liquid courage they call it right? yeah that's what they exactly yeah. what they call it <laughs> how old were you at the, so you were in junior high you said yeah in junior oh, high okay and then when that happened I believe that um, that kind of like sparked up everything. Mm. I started stealing and um, I started stealing the bottles and um, whatever I could get my hands on. And and I I in the neighborhood we had um, I had like three friends that I used to run around with, and we all used to do the same thing: just steal bottles of alcohol. And um, that's when the drinking really like like it's just crazy because. I can't even imagine any kids in, in middle school today young doing be that. doing that. You right. know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, it's a trip. And 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 um, I would steal a lot of bottles, man. And I would have them. Um, and my mom was, was like, like I said before, is like, oh, just do it at the house. So uh, I was doing it at the house, and you know, she knew where I was. But we would get so drunk, man, and uh, blackouts. And um, I remember there was one time when, um, um, and I, um, you know, I was I was thinking about this, man, because it's it's a part of my story too. Is, is that when I, I would still try to go to school, you know what I mean, and try to do my work. And um, uh, before I got kicked out of that school, um, I remember I went, um, I came home from with my books and everything, you know, and had homework to do. And my brother was in a gang at this time, and um, he had all his friends over there. And um, was that new for him? Um, no. Okay. That, so this that, is something he had been doing for a while? Yeah, he'd been doing that for a while. What did you think about it? I mean, like, I didn't really... Think anything of it? Yeah, I think anything of it because he was doing it for so long. And then all the his his friends were, like, pretty much like my brothers, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? And, uh, like, I grew up with them, and they generally... I, I believe that they loved me, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? They cared for me. But uh, there was a lot of guys there that day, but that particular day. And then when I came home... Uh, I remember walking up and then um, they asked me if I wanted to hit a cigarette. And I was like, hmm, well, I, I, I took it as like, do you want to be cool? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So I was like, oh, yeah, I'll, well, I'll take a hit, you know? And then so when I took the hit of the cigarette, like, I was like, wow, man. They were like, don't don't hit it that hard. Don't hit it that hard. And I was like, what are you talking about, man? Don't try to tell me how to, you know, do this. And um, so I hit it again. And then after I hit it again, I was just, you know, floating and I was just like spaced out, man. And uh, but then I re later realized that it was PCP in there oh, wow. and they didn't tell me. <clears throat> wow. And I was just went out on crazy, man. And um, but that 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 really affected me, man, because I thought that, you know, they're trying to be cool with me. But they're really kind of messing with you. Yeah. Messing with me. Mm. And um, so. Hard drugs at this age, you know, it, it started to progress and, um, you know. And did you do that more or was it just that one? <clears throat> I mean, or did yeah. that then open it up to? It, it, no, it's, well, I started doing it more. Mm. I started doing it more because um, the house, it started to, like, the, the whole house, like I said before, you know, my mom was gone. So the house turned into this place where it's like a lot of drugs was coming out, a lot of drug activity a lot of different and serious drugs now mm -hmm. and not just like you know a little joint here and there right so you know just things started to get you know just progressing yeah, guys mm -hmm. started to get progressing in there and um and um you know and my alcoholism started to progress as well and i started stealing a lot more beers and and, and alcohol and um, different bottles and stuff like that and then i started getting caught and then um so i started to manipulate the system and um this all this stuff it started to progress man yeah. everything it started to progress and then by the time i got to high school i did every every drug you could think of and mm -hmm. they, i was a full-blown uh alcoholic uh, and it just we started going downhill and i it, it got to the point where i couldn't really function without mm. alcohol because i couldn't talk to a girl or that's crazy you know uh or because be social. it's just crazy because at such a young age yeah you know, to mm -hmm. be and, and dependent I, on, on i think it's it's like um People say I, I don't know where I heard it from is where you stop learning at at, at that oh, age. Yeah, remember like, um, 
I think Rachel was the one that said that Rachel White on her episode was talking about when you start like becoming addicted to something, yeah. whether it's alcoholism or drugs. Oh, you get you, stuck you kind of age. stop um, growing, growing yeah. at that age. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and that's I, I I believe that that's where it stopped for me, mm. and because in in high school it was, I mean I when I when I first started high school I I and was sorry and that's to say like emotional. Like mental yes. growth. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that's yeah. the that's the part right there, the major part. Right. It's like the psychological part mm-hmm. right. of, uh, of like thinking and um, maturity. Right, right. And, um, uh, and being mature and all that stuff. It's, it stops at that age where you start to drink. And once you stop putting it down, then you can actually learn and because you're sober. Progress. Mm-hmm. You know, right, and yeah. you're not taking anything in. Right. But like, like um, before, um, I didn't mention this, but um, I used to watch a lot of movies, a lot of movies because, you know, uh, I would just watch movies and movies and what's your favorite movie? Uh, La Bamba. La Bamba. <laughs> yeah. No, I was about to say Richie. wait hard, hard, hard flip. Oh yeah, <laughs> hard flip with our with starring our friend Brian Sumner. Eddie he stars in it. <laughs> Low budget Brian. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Did you see it though? No, 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 no but okay. we'll have to. Yeah. Matter of fact, movie night. Yeah, <laughs> let's do <it>. hard flip. <laughs> let's do it. That was a good movie though. That's I funny. really did like it, man. But no, I used to watch a lot of movies, and I, I, the reason why I mentioned it is because, like, building up that, uh, um, that's where I got a lot of my ideas and um, my ideology about you know fatherhood and and being a man and um because i would mm. watch the movies and and try to portray that and uh, in real life you know what i mean like all the gangster movies you could think of i watched them and then so i would try to take bits M- and pieces of them. yeah mimic that and mm. um and i i thought i was doing a really good job you know what i mean mm. and i ended up going to um Altaloma high school and um i i actually tried to you know to do school but by this time i was like in freshman colleges or i mean freshman um classes um but being a senior <laughs> oh dang so you're just you're way that, down the that ball. far behind yeah yeah so uh i remember i had my license at the time and uh, i was the only one that had a license in the class <laughs> <laughs> i felt like so like man so, so like, you were a legit fre- freshman yeah wow no i was yeah i was a senior no but you were yeah. like a fre- oh, yeah, but freshman, freshman class classes. yeah freshman classes mm. so um i ended up going to um, um adult school and i just said forget it man you know and then from that point i just you know started to hang out with the guys more and were you I, still affiliated with that gang yeah but i started hanging out with a different crowd mm-hmm. and um still from that gang but from a with a different crowd mm. And um, so, you know, with this different crowd, we started to dabble in a lot of different things, you know, and um, like different harder drugs. And, um, and you know, just like I said, that whole scene, it was just a mess, man. And um, at the same time, my mom uh, was, she was praying, you know, praying for me because she saw, you know, she would see this stuff, you know, that was so going on. Let's kind of rewind a little bit because she stopped going to church at a certain yeah. point. So at what point did she start did she start going back to church yeah she started going back to church and uh, do you with know my what, grandma do you know, do you know what happened or uh, no i don't know exactly okay. what happened with that but i just know that i was gone a lot mm-hmm. and she was attending and she would ask me and my grandma too they would say come on why didn't you come to church i haven't seen you i don't really get to hang out with you and stuff like what'd that. what'd you think of that because you that was a, at one point that was a place that you you really enjoyed yeah i mean like it, I didn't really pay no mind to it, but I know that there was one um, particular time that I remember. Um, it was right before high school, um, before going to high school, is that um, there was this girl that I was in middle school that I was, you know, um, trying to. What, I was trying to make her my my girlfriend, and um, her dad was a pastor. Oh wow! And uh, she was she go to church a lot, and um, but this time I really was alcoholic and mm. you know weed and all this stuff, and um, and she um, asked me to go to church, and by this time I haven't went to church since Rancho, you know, and so she told me, um, yeah, come to church with me, it'll be cool, and then um, I was like, nah, you know, hmm. I'm good, you know, and and the alcohol was more. Uh, important in my life at that time i couldn't really give it up you know right. and, and well not only that the, the culture seems like you're embedded in with yeah. a, a culture of partying and, and getting high and yeah. drunk and stuff like that and for to go to church it's like yeah yeah you know i'm good yeah and she but it, the crazy thing about it is that um 
like after I dropped out of high school and everything, and then um, like I said, the drugs started to be more important, and and um, it just started to grab a hold of me, man. And um, I uh, there was a time uh, in my life that I, I uh, you know, I was just broke, dirty, having took a shower, and I remember I was gonna go into Ralph's to go steal a bottle, huh. and I walk into Ralph's, and when I'm coming out about to steal a bottle or walk out, I see that same girl that asked me to go to church. You know, and she was walking in with her with her family, you know, and her, you know, and uh, her boyfriend or whoever that guy was with her. And I was just like, man, look at you. Yeah, thinking to myself. and You were uh, embarrassed. Yeah, I was embarrassed. I was going to say something to her, but I was like, nah, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and But I reflect on that because I remember that... Um, uh, I I would hear about Jesus with her, you know, and I I would hear Jesus was you know that's the crazy thing is that Jesus was always calling me you mm-hmm. know throughout my whole life and but I was just too uh, in this bondage to the alcoholism you know and right. um, but things started to get worse man started to get worse the crime started to become more um, I started to become more involved in it and then the DUIs I started to get a lot of DUIs and um, and then during the DUIs. I would go to different groups, and again, I would hear about change and that this alcohol, about alcohol being a problem in my life, and I would see the videos, the DUI classes, and these stories, I would hear stories. I had to attend um, uh, like an AA meeting or a NA meeting or one of those. And um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with those um, with those meetings, but that's a part of my story. <clears throat> and um, I remember when I, the first time I went, in the, in the meetings, they say, that it's a disease, alcoholism and, and drug addiction is a disease. And so um, I remember when I went to the to the meeting the first time and, um, you know, I'm smoking a cigarette and I see this girl and I was like, man, I'm going to talk to her afterwards, you know. And then so we go in the meeting and then everybody starts sharing about their, you know, alcoholism and all this stuff. And um, that girl that I was going to talk to, she said that she had a disease. I was like, uh <laughs> <laughs> nah, nah, you know what I mean? Not gonna hit her up. But then people started talking about their life and that they were, you know, they were smoking everything. They smoked everything up. They lost everything. And then I was mm-hmm. just like, wow, man, my life has, you know, this is what I'm gonna come to. I had that thought for a brief second, but then that's you guys, you know, that's not me. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That's a, That was my um, kind of mentality at the time. But then, you know, um, like I, like I said before, you know, alcohol, it just kept on coming, man. And uh, stealing, it started to become um, a lot more, you know, more realer. So, so even though you were going to those classes, it was you weren't changing yet? No. Nah, yeah. No, nah, I wasn't even thinking about it. Right. I mean, like you, that Just because you had to go. Yeah. Just for, just for, you know, just for, just because of the, the reason that I had to, to go for, uh, for the court, yeah. you know, so... Um, I, it was in 2006 that um, at this time I was about uh, 21, and um, you know, and now I'm legal to drink. And um, I had a girlfriend that I met off the party line, and because you guys are talking on the party, <laughs> <That's> <laughs> <laughs> on the party no, line. No, they weren't talking on a party That's line. Funny. But it was a, <laughs> <laughs> you reminded me. I was like, what? No, no, yeah. <laughs> No, nah, but uh, the one story party line. If you want to <laughs> join, just become be a guest. <laughs> and uh, yeah, I met her from the party line, and we started to uh, hit it off. And um, you know, and we, um, you know, at this time we were living in uh, Rialto, and um, on this particular night, man, um, my brother, um, um, uh, to rewind a little bit, my brother ended up going to church. And he started to follow the Lord, and mm-hmm. um, he got saved. And did your mom take yeah, him? Yeah, yeah, my mom mm-hmm. took him, and um, so he was being a part of the church. And I didn't know it at this time. I didn't know it until I got sober later on in life. But um, I ended up um, uh, hearing that he was praying for me, like you know, and, uh, and that, and my mom would still try to invite me to church. And but um, I remember I got off of work, and he was having the problems and stuff like that with his with his um, his girlfriend and 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 the kids and stuff like that. And um, what happened is that um, you know we both got drunk and we ended up getting uh, busted. We for you know just we just ended up getting busted, man. And um, when we got busted, uh, we uh, we had to take a deal, you know, um, either. Uh, five years. Well, my deal was um, either four years with two strikes, and his was uh, four years with two strikes. So um, I never been 
in a situation like that before. And so, um, but me being uh, of the fact that I already been to county, so I had a little bit of understanding about the court system and about, you know, um, and then um, about the gangs and stuff like that, the gang culture in there and the prison gangs and stuff like that. And I was being a part of it. And um, my brother wasn't though, he was gonna be a Christian. Mm -hmm. So um, he ended up, you know, taking, um, uh, he ended up taking two year or four years with two strikes, and I was like, I ain't gonna take no four years with two strikes. I'm gonna, I'll take five years with two strikes right now, but I'm not gonna take because I'll get struck out in there, you know, and um, and that's what I didn't want, you know, to because I already knew my behavior at that time mm -hmm. was like, you know, it was senseless. You were gonna you know? stay longer than yeah. I, I knew that I was gonna have the pit and work mm -hmm. and and all these things and because um, the things that I would hear from other older homies that I would talk to, so um, I ended up getting that five years and um, and um, during this time uh, my brother was uh, man it was crazy because we we're going we we're chained up together and we we're, we're going up to reception and um, when we we're going up to Tehachapi he was. Uh, he was evangelizing to people, man, and and uh, we were like sows away from each other, and like I, I could hear him on the vent, and um, like you know answering Bible questions and saying, "Hey, brother Sammy," and and, and people would um, um, you know would call him and ask him for you know prayer and stuff like that, and then but me when hearing that, I felt like man, man, he's a because I thought like Christians were like. What, like we're weak at that time like my whole perception uh about that childhood you know um growing up in but the him church. being your older brother and him protecting you at a certain point would you like how, how would, did that change it at all yeah because this was a, someone you looked up to yeah and now he's preaching the word yeah because my my outlook on it was like okay if you are gonna be a christian um it it, it kind of seemed like he was a, a Christian um, only because he got busted. Yeah. And I don't know if, he, if that makes sense. We're like, okay, um, he wasn't really like Well, because walking. you guys got busted. He was yeah. supposed, supposedly a Christian. Then you guys got drunk or whatever. So he kind of yeah. skewed your view of, yeah, it was kind of like fake. You thought it was yeah, fake. Yeah, I thought it was something. like fake, uh, like, a, like a fake Christianity. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, you're only being a Christian because you don't want to run with the Southsiders or or these this particular group. Oh, you know, in, in, in jail. The, yeah, in jail. In jail. And I got me, you. I was like, I ain't gonna be no Christian, you know. I'm gonna I'm gonna ride for my homie, you know, my, my for the for the gang, you know. Mm -hmm. So um, that was my mindset. So I was like, man, I was kind of embarrassed, you know, of it. So because he's your brother, yeah, he's and he's my brother, but um, he still loved me and he still showed you know grace and um, I just I seen it, man, and um, and we went to the yard. I remember it, man. It was like like it was clear day, man, and and he told me he was like, so what are you gonna do? Like, you know, what are you going to do in here? And I was like, man, I'm going to ride for my hood. You know, I'm going to ride for it. You know, I'm going to I'm gonna run with the homies. And I was like, what are you going to do? And he said, um, I'm going to serve the Lord. And I was like, all right, cool. Well, you go do that. You know, and then he ended up walking around the yard by himself. And then I went to go hang out with those guys that I didn't even know, you know, these gang members, right? But the thing is, what, what struck my heart was that, Deep down inside, I really wanted to do that. Mm -hmm. I really wanted to be a Christian like he like he was doing, but I just couldn't do it because I was under this like power of like um, wanting to please people or like you know wanting that acceptance, that acceptance that from respect. the gang, that respect from the gang. Because I don't know at this part, uh, this this time in my life, I was just you know in this spot where it's like you know crazy but i ended up doing the whole term you know the whole five years i got in a lot of trouble in there a lot of stuff happened in there and um and just a lot of mess man and my brother got out and and he was you know continuing to be a christian and uh, you know doing the whole thing out there and he was praying and uh men's meetings he was praying for me and, and um i got to a point in my life when when i got out i was like okay uh, i knew that i was gonna get out soon I was like, man, you. Every time you get busted, every time you get in trouble, every time you get in a fight. By this time, um, I already been um, stabbed, jumped, and just all kinds of things that I've been involved in. And um, I, I, every time I get into these things, I'm always drunk. You know, what I mean, there has to be a problem with alcohol. Deep down inside, I was thinking about this mm -hmm. before I got out. And then, so when I got out, my mom was like, you know, you should not be drinking. And I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna drink. You know. 
but I ended up selling, uh, started selling, um, you know, dope and, and, um, you just got right back into the swing of things. Uh, kind of, but like it was slow. Mm-hmm. But then it went, when I, uh, started to hang out with my friends, um, like the old gang members and, and starting to go out to the old neighborhood, I started to get back into it. And, um, but then, um, you know, and then later on I, I got with this girl and then we started to hit it off and I was, cause by, uh, in 2011, when I got out to 2012, there was a lot of things. And when that alcohol got in my system, I started to progress in all kinds of different things. Um, and particularly I started to, um, do a lot of, uh, crack cocaine Mm. and um that was it started to progress fast in my life it started from you know just a little powder to rocking it up and um and i was trying to be a be do it in secret and um there was one time when i was in my room in rialto and it was like late at night right and i was trying to um um i i did all my drugs and i was just like man just hating life and it was the middle of the night. I saw this um, this TV preacher that was on the TV, and this old lady, and she had like a hunchback, and she was walking <laughs> up to the, you know, um, with the with the uh, the little crutches or the little walker, walker. Mm-hmm. and she she goes up, and he was just like, you know, uh, with this holy water, I'm gonna piss some of this holy water on you, and you're gonna be healed. And um, he did it, and then she started gets up, and she starts walking everywhere. <laughs> And she starts running around, and everybody's like, hallelujah. Da, da, da. And I was like, and then it comes to him, and he says, if you want this holy water, it could heal you from anything. So by this time, I already knew that I had a problem. So I was like, okay, well, let me get this. You know what I mean? It was only for a dollar. <laughs> so I ended up, you know, sending the dollar, and then um, the, the holy water came in, and like maybe a couple weeks later. And um, when it came in, I get the holy water, and I do all this stuff, and, you know, the whole cross and all that stuff, and then... And, and, and when I do it, I was like waiting there for like five minutes. Man, I'm still the same, man. <laughs> <laughs> like this didn't do nothing to me. What were you expecting? I was expecting that, like, get healed. The like, I'll were be, you like, expecting the Holy Spirit? It sounds like you were expecting the Holy Spirit to. And you probably didn't know what it was mm, at the time, yeah. but maybe waiting for the Holy Spirit to 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 be, fill you and, and maybe feel different, you know? Yeah, and, like like well, like like an emotional response or something mm-hmm. like a like like outrageous yeah, yeah. And like, where, like oh okay i don't have no desire to to do that Drink you know what I mean? yeah. take away yeah and and but it just wasn't the case right and um later i found out um uh, uh, probably like uh last year or um a year ago i found out it was a robert tiltman <laughs> <laughs> and he got a busted for a scam and all that stuff but <laughs> um, just tap water <laughs> <laughs> but uh um but you know during that time, um, um, when I get out, you know, I, I had this problem with, you know, with, with cocaine and, and um, just my life is a mess. I get with this girl and she doesn't know that I have this problem and I try to hide it and she breaks up with me and that like ruined me, you know, and then um, I started drinking more. I started hanging out with the guys more. I wasn't home no more. Um, yeah, it was just, I was a mess, man. And uh, I ended up getting shot in um, in Lakewood at a at a party. I got shot in the arm, and um, that kind of like threw me, threw me off, and um, it, it rocked my family's world. And my mom was, was devastated. Tar- targeting you, or was no? It, like it was just, just like a it, shooting like a at a party. Yeah, it was like a just a, a mis a mis a misunderstanding, and and this guy, you know, he's just uh, this guy was just thought some something, and he was he was high and. Um, and so I was a loud mouth and so he was actually shooting you shooting yeah, at you though yeah shooting okay. at me and it almost hit it, like he almost hit my like he was aiming for my heart but I, I hit it and it hit my arm oh, and luckily it was only a 22 but at that time I was like man so it just changed everything man and um I but my alcoholism progressed and um um and then uh, by this time I was still on parole right and um um you know when at uh, in 2013 is when um, I started to get a lot of um, I got two DUIs back to back, and um, and um, and within a and, two month span. And you already had two before that though, right? Yeah, yeah. I had so we, okay. So well, I had ahead. I had two in uh, uh-huh. yeah, uh, yeah. a while back, and I I did so the classes. So this is your fourth one. Yeah. So this is my fourth one, and then um, so. Um, I but the the first one or the the first one in 2013 I um, 
I uh, I went to I got a violation and and the crazy thing about it, man, I knew this was the Lord is that that uh, my pro officer, she was a Christian, mm-hmm. and she would pray for me. She would tell me about Jesus and mm. that He loves me, and and then I man, God bless her heart, man. Yeah. You know, at that time, and she would she she didn't want to see me go to jail, but right. you know, and I got this violation, and then right after I got the violation. I get another DUI, but this time I crash my car, flip it, and um, when I crash my car and uh, you know I go to jail, my mom picks me up that morning. I went to the house, I fell asleep, and then she went to work, and and I wake up in the morning right in Riverside, and I go and I walk around because I need some beer, you know, I need some alcohol in my system because I'm starting to get the shakes and stuff like that, and I go to this hill in Challen Park in um, Riverside, and I just. You know, I have these 40s right there, and it's like I'm crying. I'm just saying, like, God, help me. Because you didn't want it. Yeah, but you I didn't it. want to do it. I knew that I was going to kill myself if I mm. continued to live this life like this, you know. And I was telling nobody wanted to hang out with me no more. And it's like I burned all my bridges. And just my mom was the only one that was really, my brother was gone. And, and um, just my mom was the only one that was really, like, there, you know, for, you, there so. for me. And my pro officer. And, you know, and I cried out to God that night and or that day. And um, when I cried out to him, uh, I was I was like, OK, well, I said it. And then I went to an AA meeting and I just let everything out, you know, at the meeting. And then um, so then, um, you know, fast forward and uh, I end up um, uh, continuing to drink, you know, and um, I remember I, I, I continued to drink and I was at my sister's house uh, by myself and I was at her house and and my pro officer. I was living at her house, and, and my pro officer comes to the house, and she says, um, can you test? And I was like, yeah, but I'm dirty. And she says, oh, well, you could, you have, all, you know, you could either go to rehab, or you can go, or a treatment center, or you can go to jail. Uh, you're going to go to jail, but if you go to rehab for, or a treatment center first, then it, it'll look good on you. And I was like, well, I don't want to go back to the county. So, you know, I'll go to rehab. I'll, I'll go to a treatment center and that, you know. And I ended up going into it. And um, when I would go to the treatment center, it, was, it wasn't what I expected. Um, it, it, I, I was introduced to AA and uh, Cocaine Anonymous. And um, I started getting involved, man. And, and, and I started getting involved with sobriety. Mm-hmm. And that was 5-15-2013. Uh, That's uh, when the time I got sober. So when I went in there to rehab, they took a, a group of us guys um, to a church, uh, um, a Judson Baptist church out there in San Bernardino, right? So they would take a group of us, and um, that's when I really, uh, I really heard the gospel, man. And um, but before that, I already knew like my sin, like I knew like like the effects of it, and like I was uh, um, like I was separated from God, and because. When I was in, in 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 prison, I would hear, like I said before, like Jesus was calling me, man. People would come in, and they would, you know, I would go to a church service or something like that, and I would hear people, you know, some of the preachers say about the sinner's prayer and stuff like that, and they would talk about the Word of God. And uh, so all this stuff started to come in, and I was like, man, you know, my sin was just right before my face, man. And um, uh, I remember that, um, you know, I, uh, I asked somebody to, you know, pray for me. So we we started talking and then um, they're like you you understand that you're a sinner and, and they so we, they went through the whole thing the process with me and then um, I was like yeah man it's like man I um I, but they they talked about eternal life you know what I mean and it was foreign to me and I didn't really understand it but after that time um so I, I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior that day and um, that was in 2013 in June and. Um, the next um, week, I, I get um, uh, baptized, and then um, all when I'm in the rehab, and uh, I was in the rehab for like six months, and then things started to change. Like, no, I, I it doesn't feel good to lie no more. Mm. You know what I mean? And uh, <clears throat> it doesn't feel good to lust, or it doesn't feel good to... Uh, started to get, Yeah, you know, feeling, feeling all the convicted. Mm-hmm. And then um, um, I remember the, you know, there was an incident with this girl in there, and then um, I had to tell the truth. You know what I mean? I told the truth in front of everybody, and it was just this thing. But but I started to get really heavily involved with, uh, um, or heavily involved with, um, um, with AA and, and Cocaine Anonymous to the point where um, I would go to church on Sundays, and I would read a Proverbs a day, and that was a, that's the only thing. But 
you know, um, but I started to get to a point where uh, I would be in AA for so long and um, I started to uh, um, climb the ladders in there. And um, But the thing that I, I learned about in AA is that um, um, with the big book of Alcoholics Anonymous, um, Bill Wilson and, and Bob Smith, uh, the co-founders of uh, the, the big book, they uh, or that that organization, they um, they talk about that because they intermingle Christianity with it, right? Mm-hmm. So I hear Jesus, you know, and uh, uh, and I hear about God, and people talk about God in there, but it's not the same, you know. And then, um, but I don't know this at the time because I'm not reading my word, and um, and I hear it at church, but it's not the you know it's not registering because I only hear it on Sundays, and then that's it. So. Um, uh, I remember um, I go to um, um, uh, I go to uh, um, a Christian bookstore um, and with my mom and I read I'm starting to read the um, a different translation because I had the Message Bible and it's like a paraphrase uh, paraphrase mm-hmm. and um, so that time um, I started reading the Message Bible I mean uh, a different uh, version of the New Living Translation mm-hmm. and and it kind of spoke to me and man I read the and in, in that uh, story I read the whole um, um, Sermon on the Mount mm-hmm. and man I was so convicted man mm-hmm. just uh, like my life was still a mess but I was just like going on for sobriety but as long as I'm sober like I'm good you victory. know what I mean that was the, the only thing I was concerned with at the time so, you know, it gets to a point where it's like, um, um, you know, that I, I, I'm I saved, but I have to uh, get into my word. And so I have to read this, man, because I have a, now I have a new desire to, to get into this word after reading that Sermon on the Mount. Because Jesus was like, that was a great message, a great mm-hmm. sermon that he, that he preached right there. Mm-hmm. And then so I started getting into commentaries and expositors like John MacArthur and just different, different ones in that, that would exposit the word. And then I started to have a desire. But by, by this time, um, to back up a, just a little bit, is that um, by this time my mom, uh, I mean, um, I, I met my wife at a, at a meeting. And we, we get married quick. And, um, you know, we, um, you know, we started, uh, we started Bible study. And you know, and then I had this this desire to um, um, to have a uh, to to go to Bible college, mm. and um, so how I, how I am where um, how I got to the place where I'm at today is um, you know uh, I was calling um, I used to listen to the pastor's perspective all the time, mm-hmm. so I called James uh, Cadiz. I talked to him, and uh, I was just like, "Hey, bro, I'm trying to get to a um, you know." Um, you know a bible college around and i was living in the upland me and my wife were living in the upland at the time and we end up um, um he was like oh you should go to a living way uh living way christian fellowship they have uh, they love jesus they got a bible college out there hmm. and i was like ah you know i, I kind of like just ignored it but Why? then um i don't know i don't know i think i was still searching okay you know what i mean uh, i i didn't really go there um, but I was like, uh, let me try Azusa Pacific. Let me, but all these other places, they they wanted a GED. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. So I didn't have a GED, and so I was like, oh, okay, well, I gotta get a GED first, you know what I mean? But uh, so I kind of like stopped, you know, right there. And but then I, I was like, man, I'm gonna go to um, a Calvary Chapel Fontana. I don't know for what reason, but I ended up going to Calvary Chapel Fontana with uh, Daniel Velasquez, I think it is, and uh, it was a good church, you know, and. Uh, and then I ended up coming. Um, I I was hanging around with some guys and at the from the Bible study, and we went to this men's Bible bonfire, and um, I heard about um, David Zamora, and then um, um, I went to his church right where and I'm then, at today. And then you found out like, oh, yeah. this was the place. But I was only going to go there because I had a um, a, a, a incident with um, uh, the Mother God Church. You know, these Mother God this cult. And um, with a question, so I wanted to ask uh, David Zamora about it. You had an incident? What do you mean? Well, you had, like, like an um, they came, they they came to my house, and, and you know, talking you about Mother God, okay. and well, I knew what to say, and I, I had like, but I wanted to ask him about it, and then plus I was gonna speak at um, a pro, um, a PAC meeting. Okay. So I, he he was a chaplain, so um, I I found all this out about him, and so I ended up going there, and um, they're teaching in the Book of Revelation, and then I didn't get to talk to him because he was talking to somebody, so. Uh, I walked outside of the church and then I saw a friend that used to go to one of the meetings and I was like, hey, what are you doing here? And we started talking and she was like, what are you doing here? I was like, man, I'm trying to get into a, um, a Bible college. 
And um, I didn't I I didn't know that the Bible college was there. <laughs> and then uh, so I was like, hey, I'm trying to get into a Bible college and, you know, and these quotes and all this stuff. I told her and she was like, well, the pastor's right there. Hey, pastor, pastor. <laughs> she waved yeah. down. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, he comes, man. And then uh, we started talking. We chop it up for like like an hour, you know, uh -huh. and we're just mm -hmm. talking about everything. I just... And I was telling the whole situation, and I was like, man, I need to go. Uh, I feel like, you know, I should go to a Bible college, you know, I want to get more of the word. And he was like, man, we got it right here. <laughs> you know, and, and um, so, you know, and so I ended up going to the Bible college and um, getting it, getting plugged in there. But Where I, you met Drew's dad. Yeah. We what, should bring up. Yeah, we <laughs> met Drew's dad and uh, Raw. And, um, but the crazy thing is, is that my mom, when I, when I got out of prison, I went to church with my mom, right? And to Calvary Chapel Rancho, mm -hmm. the guest speaker was David Zamora. Oh, really? Yeah, and I, <laughs> I remember his, his his a little bit of his story, and that I could relate to it, you know. And then, um, so my mom was like, you know that that was the 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 guest speaker that you that uh, you know, and she sent him an email letting him know that I was gonna be there. Mm. So then um, I told. Uh, uh, my pastor, I was like, man, hey, did you know my mom sent the? And he was like, I got it right here. Oh, I was like, wow. man, but he didn't good. know that wow. you were the yeah, the I was guy. the one. Yeah, okay. So, so it was, was kind of uh, like God put you there. Yeah, they can't right. Hold yeah. The and what it sounds like to me that that God knew your heart yeah. and He put you at Living Way. Mm -hmm. Like He knew you wanted to know more. That's why you wanted to go to Bible college. Mm -hmm. And He made He opened that door. I mean, that wasn't to me. I, I really truly believe that that was. God working in your life, yeah, and and really putting you there. So I think that's awesome. Man. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. yeah. It's amazing, and so bro. and it's and amazing. you're like you said, you're sober. How many years? Uh, five years. Congratulations, yeah, brother. Yeah, that's years. that's huge. Because I mean, starting at a young age, drinking and you know that young and just being so bonded to that, it's huge, right? Yeah, and 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 you know what else too? Because I I know that uh, a lot of listeners lis listeners listen to this, you know, this podcast, and I. I I know that there's some that may have a understanding of Jesus and they might like, it's kind of like, like skin surface. deep, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like it's just a, uh, like a surface Jesus and, it, but it's, they haven't really like, um, really got deep into knowing who he really is. Mm -hmm. You right. know what I mean? And yeah. um, actually relying on, upon him because I came out of the, the, the place where it's like a higher power, um, like God is everything, like a, uh, you know, and. It's a generic God. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, it just, it doesn't um, help um, that God, it, it can't help you in, 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 in troubles and trials or anything like that, you know. Right. He's that, he's that father that's there when he gets home, when you, you know, when he gets home for work and he's there, you yeah. know, you're there waiting for him and he's there waiting, you know, ready, ready for you yeah. to take you home. So yeah. that's, uh, that's yeah. good, man. I'm glad that, uh, sounds like everything's going great for you. Yeah, I mean, I do have my challenges. Um, I've been married. We all do. Been for married sure. for about, <laughs> <laughs> for about uh, right now. You know, today, um, I've been married for about three years, and mm -hmm. um, and you know, me and my wife, and um, I love my wife, and we have one son, and we have one on the way, girl. Congratulations! And uh, thank you. And and just life is different, bro. And um, so if anybody's listening and they have a problem with drug addiction or alcoholism or any life dominating sin in their life uh, understand that there is hope there is a way out and um you know jesus can deliver you from that and he had and there's victory in that you know yep. what i mean and uh, you have to call out to him you're a and, testament to that because of mm -hmm. everything that you went through and how much you struggled but god was still there and he had his grace for you exactly bro so Thanks, Daniel. We really appreciate you coming on. And, Thanks a uh, lot, brother. Um, yeah. Good so day. with that, we just ask that you open your eyes, listen closely, soften your heart, and ask God to reveal himself to you.